Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to another Fallout 4 mod review. Today we're checking out a bit of a modern rifle and that is the HK XM8 Assault Rifle by Linguini. Now this is going to add in the iconic XM8 rifle that some of you may remember from games like Ghost Recon or Battlefield Bad Company 2. And this is a very pretty looking gun. It's one that doesn't see a lot of use in real life, though it is a very, very unique weapon and one that most people will recognize pretty much instantly. This thing has a very, very unique design. It has a somehow combination of retro and futuristic vibes that help to make this thing feel really, really unique. For the purposes of this mod, it will definitely embrace the more modern tactical side of things, sporting a bunch of different tactical attachments like optics and magazines and suppressors that you can throw on over at the weapons workbench. This weapon does actually have a leveled list integration and will be added to the game after level 15, though you will have to download an optional file for that. By default, this thing will be craftable at the chemistry station. If you do want to find it out in the world, though, it will spawn on vendors and gunners again after level 15 with that level list plugin. On top of that, though, there is even a unique version of the XM8 hidden somewhere in the Institute. If you want to find out more, you can check it out on the Mod Authors mod page. This weapon does feature custom animations from Haru that are taken from the G36, and it even has tactical reload support. You have to choose which of the main files you want, one with tactical reload or one without, depending on if that's a feature you want on this weapon or not. Without further ado, let's go ahead and take this thing in game and check out its stats and some of its other cool features. So here we have the most basic version of the XMA, and this is a really good looking model. This thing has a base damage of 30 and fully automatic, uses 556 rounds, has a fire rate of 136, a range of 203, an accuracy of 70, a weight of 5.6 pounds, and a value of 192 caps. A pretty well balanced assault rifle for level 15. And this thing looks just great. If you're looking for something a little bit more modern and tactical, this is definitely one I'd recommend picking up, and it definitely brings a bit of unique flair that most assault rifles don't have. Now, earlier I did say custom animation, so of course you know we gotta check those out, starting off with firing and reloading with a standard magazine. And I gotta say, small as it may be, this thing has a really nice sight picture for those standard iron sights. Additionally though, we do get a drum magazine reload animation, so we'll go ahead and switch that over so you can check that out as well. Really, really nice stuff. Now then, taking this thing over to a weapons workbench, as to be expected with it being a modern and tactical type of weapon, we can do a whole lot with this thing, including converting it into something like an LMG, or something more like a DMR purpose, or something in between like a nice integrally suppressed assault rifle, or even a bit of a carbine. So you can really do a lot with this thing and play with it to suit it to your liking. Now then, let's go ahead and take the basic version of this weapon and see what kind of attachments we exactly get. Starting with the receivers, we have your standard allotment of receivers that you would expect with a bunch of semi-automatic and automatic versions of the receivers. With the lightest semi-automatic having a damage of 27 and the lightest automatic having a damage of 30, which is pretty interesting. And then the most advanced version of the automatic having 51 and the most advanced version of semi having 52. So really, automatic is definitely going to be what you want for this weapon. The semi-automatic does not seem to have too much power behind it for whatever reason. For barrels, we have the carbine barrel, the compact barrel, the assault barrel, the LMG barrel, and the SD barrel, which is going to have an integral suppressor and remove the ability to add on muzzle devices. For the stocks, we have the collapse stock, the full stock, and the half stock. For magazines, we have the standard magazine, the drum magazine, which is going to take just a second to load there, and then the 60 round magazine. For iron sights, we have the standard iron sights, the MBUS iron sights, which appear to not have their textures routed correctly, though that is a very easy fix, one that the author can fix up in just a second. The Vortex UH-1 holoscope, the Romeo 3, the Elcan Spectre, the Barska Red Dot, the Aimpoint M2, the EOTech 552 Holoscope, the SRS-02, the EOTech EXP Holoscope, the Aimpoint T1, the Cobra, the Mini-RDS, the OKP-7, the PKO-6, 
the Ultra Shot, and the AccuPower Scope. For muzzles, we have the option for no muzzle break, the AAC 556 suppressor, the Surefire Monster Suppressor, the PBS 4 Suppressor, the PWS CQB Compensator, and the Strike Industries Cookie Cutter Muzzle Break. One that I've seen popping up on a lot of weapon mods lately, though it is a very interesting design. For materials, we do actually get a handful of skins, obviously the option for none, the Damascus color from Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the ERDL Red, the ERDL Woodland, the Institute Prototype, the Retro, the Wanamingo, the Zebra, and the Schizo Special. Now, personally, I would like to see a little bit more wear and tear on these as it is a bit clean. It would be nice to see a little wear on the edges when it comes to paint, but other than that, it looks pretty good especially like the ERDL Woodland Camo. And then finally, we do have a damage modifier section where you can add modifiers from 0 up to 99% in case the weapon just isn't doing enough damage for you. All right, now then it is time, of course, for our damage test. And it's been a while since we've done all four Death Claws, but I do want to test out some different things with this weapon since the balance on the semi-automatic receiver is a bit interesting. We'll be starting with the basic version of the weapon and fully automatic as it comes by default and then we'll be testing a fully upgraded full auto receiver and a fully upgraded semi-auto receiver. The damage is only slightly different but I am curious if there is a reason to take semi-auto at all and then we'll be testing out a fully auto receiver with the maximum damage modifier available at the weapons workbench. This is not going to have any perks applied to it so this is just the raw stats of the weapon. Let's see how it does starting with the standard version of the XM8. And just shy of one magazine, we put that death claw down in 31 bullets. Kind of to be expected, having a pretty high damage of 30 in fully automatic is pretty decent. We could have probably got him down in one magazine if I had a bit better aim at his weak point. Now then, let's see how we do with the fully upgraded full auto. My guess is, is it's going to perform pretty well based on the standard version. Yep, and to be expected in about half as many shots, that death clot is down. So my guess is that semi-auto is going to be pretty pointless, as it's going to have a slower fire rate and not much more damage. But let's find out anyways. And it definitely performs well, just not nearly as fast as the other weapons. Putting down that death claw in exactly as many shots as the prior weapon, but in a much slower fashion. Now then, let's see how we do with that damage modifier. This thing's going to go down probably in about 7 shots, so let's check it out. And I definitely called it in exactly 7 shots. That death claw is down. And that's with no weapon perks. If you throw on commando, that death claw is going to go down in about 3 or 4 shots, which is just insane. So this weapon could definitely be a bit overpowered with those damage modifiers, though without them, I think it's decently balanced for the level you find it. Still, a pretty great weapon and definitely something cool for those modern tactical load orders. So yeah guys, that is the XM8 Assault Rifle, one that I know one of you has been asking for for a very long time. You know who you are. With that, if you want to try this mod out for yourself, it will be linked down in the description below. I definitely recommend checking it out if you're a fan of the XM8. This is definitely the best mod available for that weapon right now, so check it out if you want to. Again, links down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, and I hope you did, don't forget to drop a rating, subscribe if you haven't already for more videos just like this, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Consider checking out my Patreon if you are interested in supporting the channel. It is completely optional, though there are a couple of neat perks over there, so check it out if you're interested, but again, completely optional. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace!